Coming up on the San Francisco 49ers report, some Niners injury news to get to after that dub against the Philadelphia Eagles and after that beatdown of the Birds. I'm going to explain why San Francisco is the best team in the National Football League. First, it's a victory Monday here on the show, and if you were impressed with how the Niners beat the Philadelphia Eagles because that was a very impressive victory, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. And with that, let's talk some Niners right now. San Francisco so dominant in that victory against the Philadelphia Eagles, but they do come away with it with a couple of injuries that we want to get to here to start off the show. Backup tight end Ross Dwelly, high ankle sprain. He's going to be out for the next couple of weeks. Does that mean that the Niners are going to make a move at tight end? We do have an update on Zach Ertz coming up here just around the corner. As for defensive lineman Eric Armstead, we discussed his foot injury that kind of lingered all throughout last week. He is dealing with a foot injury as well as a knee injury. More on him coming up here in just a moment. Offensive guard Spencer Burford, who is in there playing against that really talented Eagles defensive line, although this Niners offensive line able to hold up in pass protection, open up some running lanes as well for Christian McCaffrey after the first couple of drives in which the Niners were stagnant, has a different knee injury than the one that has been bothersome for him over the last couple of weeks. Darrell Luter Jr., hamstring injury, probably going to be out next week against the Seattle Seahawks. And Ray Ray McLeod, day-to-day -day with the rib injury, the special team's ace could not play against the Eagles because of that. And I actually think it kind of benefited San Francisco because Debo Samuel was running with force like his hair was on fire as the primary kick returner for the Niners against the Eagles. Let's circle back here to Eric Armstead. I think that this injury is a little bit of a concern. And moving forward, going ahead, looking ahead at this matchup against Seattle, do you decide to sit Eric Armstead because of his overall impact along this Niners defensive line? San Francisco going to do further evaluations on his knee as well as his foot. They're not sure as of right now because it's so early in the week if he's going to miss time. And I've always said that Eric Armstead is an underrated player for this team. Everybody gets enamored with the stats as well as the sacks. But look at his imprint that he's had for this San Francisco 49ers defensive unit. Overall pro football focus grade of 81.9, a pass rush grade of 85.1, Against the run, 59.8, so below league average. But I think that his mere presence along that Niners defensive line really just speaks for itself. He's been able to tally, according to PFF, 42 total pressures this year. Six hits, 29 hurries, five sacks, 13 stops. A couple of moments in that game against Philadelphia, he collapsed the pocket, forcing Jalen Hurts to either get out of there and jet out of the pocket or broke the pocket down, leading to a Jalen Hurts sack as this Niners defensive line, since that Chase Young trade, continues to eat. And when you factor in what the Niners have at their disposal this year as far as their potential, you don't want Armstead to be out for a long while. So do you decide to sit him against the Seattle Seahawks? Niners return home to Levi Stadium after a couple of road games against Seattle and against Philadelphia as 10.5-point favorites against their arch-rival in the NFC West, and the over-under for this game at 46.5. You combine that with the fact that Javon Kinlaw and Kalia Davis played really good against that Eagles offensive line that came in as probably the best unit in the NFL, but I thought San Francisco really did dominate at the point of attack in that game against Philadelphia. Javon Kinlaw, two sacks, two tackles for loss, and two quarterback hits against the Eagles. The same Eagles team that kind of bullied him in the NFC Championship game. And then Kalia Davis, able to get and tally his first career sack. So I would sit Eric Armstead if he's not okay, if he's not ready to go. And I'd give some of that time to Javon Kinlaw as well as Kalia Davis. As for the backup tight end spot, with the Niners a little bit hobbled there, Kyle Shanahan was asked about potentially bringing in Zach Ertz was with the Arizona Cardinals before that with the Philadelphia Eagles, where he was a three-time Pro Bowler, second all-time in franchise history in receptions with the Eagles. And Shanahan said this about bringing in Zach Ertz, who did clear through waivers and is a free agent 
free to sign with any team. I haven't heard anything right now, so I don't think so at this time, but I have a lot of respect for him as a player. I've always been a fan. So it's kind of up to John Lynch in this front office to see if they want to fortify backup tight end. Zach Ertz, really good player in this league for a long time, and the numbers on your screen are why Kyle Shanahan is such a big fan of his. From 2013 to 2020, long sample size here, his per year averages, very healthy player, 14 and a half games played during these 16 game regular season slates, and then a very productive player as well. He averaged more than 104 targets, more than 70 catches, almost 760 receiving yards, almost 10.8 or 10.8 yards per catch, almost 11 yards per catch and four and a half touchdowns. A guy who always did such a great job of winning his routes, even though he wasn't the twitchiest player, most athletic player, and a player who was so smart, able to find some of the gaps and some of the soft spots against the defense. Last couple of years, though, he's been more injured than he was with Philadelphia. He's 33 years old, so obviously father time is undefeated, and the usage rate for him and all of his experience playing at the NFL level kind of starting to catch up to him to a certain degree. I just would love to see the Niners run a lot more 12 personnel and two tight end sets with George Kittle and Zach Ertz with the backup tight end actually being a threat to catch the football, unlike Ross Dwelly, unlike Charlie Warner, because you look at them as kind of gritty players who are just blockers out there and not really pass catching options. Now, coming up next here on the show, we'll, of course, continue to monitor that Zach Ertz situation. I'm going to explain why I think the San Francisco 49ers are the best team in football. If you think the Niners are the best team in the NFL with how they beat the Eagles, who still had the best record in the NFL, I want you to explain why down below in the comment section. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, Niners return home this upcoming week, NFL Week 14. Can you believe it? It's already December 4th right now. I feel as though producer Trizzy, Trace, and I, we were partying on New Year's Eve in Fort Worth, Texas just a couple of weeks ago, and then we came in, and we got Liddy for our Niners Raiders watch party. It's crazy how quickly this month has gone, but if you want to end your year with the bang and a bang, bang, Niner gang, and go to Niners Seahawks this upcoming weekend, use the code Niners Chat on the Game Time app, the only app that you should be using to purchase last-minute tickets to sporting events, comedy shows, I went to one the other day, as well as concerts. You use that code Niners Chat, $20 off, and when you look at this Niner Seattle game, there are still a lot of tickets available for varying price points and different vantage points from inside Levi Stadium. You want to go with some of the cheaper options, the cheapest tickets available, you know, section 405, row 13, under $200. So pretty good deals here. And I always love a ticketing app that shows me where I will be sitting. A couple of different ways that you can use your money wisely. You can use Venmo. You can just use a debit card or a credit card. And what's cool about the Game Time app is that prices drop as the event gets closer and you're guaranteed to get the lowest price using the Game Time app. So we'll put that link down below because we care about you. In the comment section as well as in the description of this video, it is code Niners Chat for $20 off. All right, let's round out the show with this. Why the San Francisco 49ers are the best team in football. The odds to win the Super Bowl, according to the New York Times, as they put this through their simulation, Niners. Not only from fraction betting odds, are, the, are they the odds on favor to win Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas? Can you imagine the scene with that city being painted with a lot of scarlet red and gold? But according to the New York Times model, 26% to win the Super Bowl. By far the best. Doubling up on the Miami Dolphins, doubling up on the Baltimore Ravens, and the Philadelphia Eagles dropping to 12%. Pretty impressive. And it's all because of how dominant San Francisco has been in all of their wins this year. In all of the games that the Niners have won, won this year, they have looked so complete, and they've looked so multiple, and they've looked so talented. And that three-game losing streak, it was concerning. But a reason why I was so fired up during that three-game losing streak, turning the ball over, they looked ill-prepared, they were outcoached, they were missing tackles, they were playing sloppy. They were not playing up to the San Francisco 49ers standard. But during this four-game winning streak, on top of the five-game winning streak earlier, 
This is the potential of this football team. This is how good they are, and this is how elite they are. We witnessed the 49ers being the best team in football with the way that they beat the brakes off of the Philadelphia Eagles. And you look at this Niners roster right now. Does San Francisco have a weakness? You might point to right tackle, and you might point to right guard. Those points are certainly valid. Outside of those positions, not only do the Niners have some of the best at those respective positions, the depth is really good. This front office has done a great job of compiling talent. This coaching staff has done a good job of developing talent and coaching them up to the point where they can be steady contributors. This is the most talented team in football. And this Philadelphia Eagles team is a very talented bunch. But you compare them with San Francisco, San Francisco had the edge as far as premium players playing like premium assets yesterday. But also the depth I thought was pretty glaring. So outside of right tackle and right guard, there really isn't a blemish on this Niners roster. And you think about what the Niners did yesterday. They went on the road, hostile environment, against the team that knocked them out in the NFC Championship game. San Francisco has been bitter for a long time since January, and they backed up their trash talk, and they survived some early punches in that game going down 6 nothing. And from that point on, from going down 6 nil and not picking up a first down until about the 12-minute mark of that second quarter, the 49ers scored touchdowns on six straight drives. And they outscored Philadelphia after going down 6 nil 42-13. It was a beatdown of the birds in Philadelphia. And that was a statement win over a quality opponent. And there's really no other way to slice it up. The 49ers kicked the Eagles' ass. And that's a really talented Eagles team that yesterday was not on the same field as the San Francisco 49ers. And I think in the process, Kyle Shanahan may have notched his most impressive regular season win. Given the opponent, what was at stake, the location of the game, and his history as a coach. Like, that was a very impressive victory that Kyle Shanahan was able to pull off and how the 49ers won. Brock Purdy, surgical. We got to start giving him his flowers. People nationally, because we give him the respect here on the show, have to start realizing how legitimate he is. 19-27, 314 yards, four touchdowns. And Debo Samuel, like Kyle Shanahan, I thought had one of the best games of his individual career. 116 yards and two touchdowns through the air. The Eagles look scared to tackle him. And another touchdown on the ground. So that's some of the offensive components. And then you shift over to the defense. San Francisco's defense, led by this great defensive line, now has 18 sacks in their last four games after tallying three more on Sunday. This Niners secondary had 11 pass breakups against Philadelphia. And Charvarius Mooney Ward has been playing long for a long time, like one of the top cornerbacks in the NFL. He did a great job of defending A.J. Brown. And Ambry Thomas played very, very well for what was the fourth consecutive week as well. So it looks like the Niners have shored up cornerback, which was a weakness. They're getting after the quarterback and sacking the quarterback, which was a weakness. Their pass protection held up yesterday, which has been a weakness. And this Niners team, really at all three levels, given the talent at linebacker with Dre Greenlaw and Fred Warner defensively, and then the array of weapons offensively and options, they're just so good in so many different areas. The Eagles came in also as one of the best tackling teams in football. In the physicality department, Niners won that battle. And you look at some of the numbers. The Eagles got shredded here. Of the Niners, 314 passing yards, 213 of those came after the catch. So Kyle Shanahan was brilliant with how he schemed up plays and played designs, pre-snap and post-snap. And James Bradbury, Eagles cornerback, talked about that after the game. He said that's a really difficult team to defend because of all the, the things that go on pre-snap with all of the motioning. And that's part of the strength of Kyle Shanahan, but also it's the unique playmakers that the Niners also have. Debo Samuel in the open field with the ball in his hands is one of one. George Kittle is a menace to bring down in the open field. Brandon Ayuk can shake cats out of their cleats with his ability to run routes but make guys miss. 
So you have this roster. You have the coach. And when this team is firing on all cylinders, like they've done in every win this year, because in every win, they've won by a large margin. They are just so difficult to stop. The pass defense was great. The pass rush was great. The run defense has been dominant. The aerial attack was really good. And they ran the ball really at will down the Eagles' throats. And Brock Purdy right now playing special football. And it was great to see Debo pop off yesterday. IU caught a touchdown, though. George Kittle in that first half was pacing San Francisco. Christian McCaffrey, dog. Niners can just hit you with an uppercut, with a little jab, with an over-the-head swoop on your head to knock you out. And they could just beat you in so many different ways, and they are so multiple. You want to play a low defensive battle? They can win that. High scoring battle? They can win it. Having to come back? Now they have realized that they can come back in a game against a really good team and win like they did yesterday, coming back from 6 0. Then being able to bend, not break, and hold the Eagles to a couple of field goals changed the rest of the game because that set the tone and changed the momentum. If the Eagles go up 10, if the Eagles go up 14 nothing, might be talking about a different game. And Kyle Shanahan said this in the locker room after the game. He said that was a great win, absolutely loved it, because of that first quarter. They faced a lot of adversity, and during that three-game losing streak, when they faced adversity, Fred Warner even said it. we got to find a way to win these grimy games and face adversity better and handle adversity better. They did that against Philadelphia when the stakes are really high. So I think that this win does a lot for the Niners mentally. And I said on Larry Kruger's show on Friday, if there was one team equipped to go into Philadelphia and win, it was the San Francisco 49ers. That came to light yesterday in an overall dominant performance. Really appreciate everybody who tuned into the show today. Wanted to inform you on the injury front to pass along some of my analysis on why San Francisco best team in football. We will go live tomorrow on the San Francisco 49ers report, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. Our watch party yesterday popped off. Thank you for all of the support as well, and we'll catch you next time here on the show. Peace.